Nice pop up there. Um, yeah. Was right below $24, then shoots up, um, you know, 50 cents almost at a clip. We've seen a lot of that happening, increasing volatility. Obviously, over the last month or so, people are yeah. panicked, wondering if the correction is silver or bubble. Is it going to pop? And uh, perhaps you can let me know what you're seeing out there since you're on the front lines. The land of Arcania. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you for Arcadia Economics. On a Monday morning, it is Monday, October 5th. I'm darn excited to be here, especially you see my friend Jorge Ramiro Monroy warming up on the left side over there. He's going to dig in and talk some silver. We have finished posting all of the Silverfest videos, so feels really good to be back here, and we will be digging in and looking at silver today and talking with Jorge, uh, CEO and president of Reina Silver. We've had Jorge on the show before, so it's a pleasure to welcome you back here, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, Chris. It's uh, great to see you again. And well, excited to, to chat with you about silver. It is a pleasure. Now, we had talked last week about doing a call. We kind of uh, had, I had a busy schedule this week, so we got you in here Monday morning. Yet somehow, it seems like the silver market found out about your appearance in advance. <laughs> Here we see a nice pop up there, um, yeah. was right below $24, then shoots up, um, you know, 50 cents almost at a clip. We've seen a lot of that happening, increasing volatility. Obviously, over the last month or so, people are yeah. panicked, wondering if the correction is silver or bubble. Is it going to pop? And uh, perhaps you can let me know what you're seeing out there since you're on the front lines. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's definitely. Uh, you know, a real roller coaster when you're uh, the CEO of a public company that's, you know, related to silver and you're just uh, watching the silver price in a very different way than you would do uh, otherwise. I guess um, when you are invested the way that a lot of us, a lot of us are in both silver and silver stocks, you, you watch it <laughs> very carefully. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of it that seems uh, really inexplicable in, in terms of the down, downward movement of silver over the past uh, few weeks. But you know, it's, I think the case for both gold and silver, uh, they just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger every day. So it's really just a matter of, uh, you know, this correction. And, you know, I, obviously I, I was actually listening to your guest, uh, I guess uh, you published it yesterday, you know, where he's talking about the COMEX and talking about, you know, the, the amounts of volumes that are coming out of the COMEX and wondering, I mean, is that, is that real? And is that, where, where is that actually coming from? And, you know, I think uh, a lot of people discussing this topic in length, but I had a really interesting phone call over the weekend that, um, you know, that I, I think it'd be interesting for me to share with you, Chris, which yeah. is um, about two years ago, I got invited by the Mexican embassy in New Delhi. They invited a a delegation of Mexican businessmen to um, to meet with the gold and silver refineries in India, and I mean it's such an eye-opening experience because, of course, you know you read about the COMEX and and that's a lot of it is is you know paper trade and speculation, but so interesting to actually be with the people who actually consume the physical. You know, the, there's about seven authorized refiners in India that are able to import gold into the country and each of these refiners uses the equivalent of Canada's entire year production of gold and, and you know this is physical gold and a lot of them have a very interesting setup where you know they bring the Doria bars they refine it then they sell some of it as bullion some of it they send to Indonesia to make into jewelry bring it back to India as jewelry then the same refiners own the stores that sell the gold as jewelry and silver as well, by the way. And uh, then people go and buy the jewelry, but then they sometimes deposit the jewelry with the jeweler in exchange for uh, some uh, short-term cash. So I mean, it's it's a fascinating uh, it's a fascinating uh, perspective on the whole gold market. You know, India, of course, 
buys something uh, like 40, 30 to 40% of world's uh, production of, of gold. And last year, 2019, they bought a record uh, number of silver that I think was also equivalent to one year's production of silver. Anyway, during this trip, I met a very interesting gentleman who owns uh, a, um, a silver trading house. It's, I think, one of the biggest silver trading houses in India. So he called me over the weekend. He, he told me, look, any, I know that you, that you are the CEO of the silver company. Any chance that you can help me uh, get uh, either silver or, or silver dory to bring to India because we're also experiencing record demand and, and it's becoming very difficult for us to get our hands on any physical silver. And, and I just thought it was, uh, you know, again, uh, in relationship to the guests that you had in your show a couple of days ago, or I think maybe it was from the Silver uh, Festival, but, you know, talking about the COMEX and speculating as to whether that physical demand is truly there or, you know, is there anything happening? It was just a very interesting anecdotal data po point to know that, um, you know, in India, it's becoming so hard to get your hands on physical. Um, you know, he said, I'll fly with you to Mexico. Just please introduce me to, uh, you know, to anybody. Now, over the years, I have had conversations with different silver producers in Mexico. And those guys have their production sold, you know, for the whole year. And any ounce that comes to the ground, it's already sold before, uh, you know, months, if not uh, years, not, not years, but definitely months before it's come out of the ground. So there isn't any, any physical silver that you can just show up and, you know, if you go to First Majestic or Endeavor Silver, it's not like they have any, uh, any silver spare to sell to anybody. And it's the same case with uh, any small silver miner in Mexico. That, uh, the, the second there's some production that comes online, you know, you have, um, if it's in concentrate, Trafigura ready to take it. If it's, uh, if it's Doria Bars, uh, one, of the, one of the banks or one of the refiners are ready to, to take it off from them. So, again, you know, going and, and looking at the, the, the movement in, in silver and all the news that has come in the last couple of weeks about, you know, the penalties for manipulating silver uh, by the banks, which, by the way, I mean, incredible that, you know, they get fined, but they're still able to be in the business and <laughs> repeat the same thing over and over. And, you know, they, they probably just think, yeah, we'll get another fine, another slap in the hand. But, um, you know, it's, it's uh, very evident the, the market is incredibly manipulated. Oh, you have that uh, slide over there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible what you mentioned, how even what they got fined for, the spoofing, sure looks to me like it continues to happen at least weekly, sometimes daily, uh, as they are getting arrested. Yeah. Uh, so um, anyway, that's why started the show do this uh, at least tried to warn people of that years before the uh, department of justice yeah it's also interesting what you mentioned about india because i actually had someone contact me that was yeah. uh, said he was a dealer was trying to get uh investment grade bars into india so i was asking around and it's apparently not the easiest thing to do no. and in terms of i don't know maybe one of the reasons perhaps <laughs> okay i'm Somewhat joking, maybe not directly tied, but here is annual transparent silver holdings. Maybe it's hard for India to get as much silver as they want because a lot of it's going into, this is SLV and the other trusts. Yeah. And you can see all the way back to 2000, I mean, the highest mark before was uh, $3.2 billion worth of silver. Already doubled that this year and we're only starting October now. Um, yeah. Jorge, maybe uh, you saw, this is last week. This is the weekly amounts that go in here. So we were seeing, this This one was a, a record setter after this record setter, and then slowed down a little bit. But, I mean, what are people supposed to think when any given day you go to CNBC, here, Dow jumps 350 points on stimulus optimism. So... I don't know. I mean, I, I have a silver show, so maybe I'm biased, but I mean, like, what are, you know, in case that's not convincing enough, here's the Fed's balance sheet. Look, it actually, right. like, started to come in for a little bit. Then they're like, wait, we better get this over $7 trillion. Stat, you know, back out of the way. So, I mean, people are turning to silver. 
No, and, and, and you know, you're, you're, that's that's exactly right. And I mean, think I think the um, you know it, these uh, move like having silver touch close to thirty and then come back to ten to twenty two. It's it's definitely you know for all of us in the in the business, whether you're in the corporate side or or just an investor holding either physical silver or shares of uh, silver companies. It's incredibly, I mean, it's incredibly uh, disturbing, and it definitely rattles your your nerves to see these uh, big moves. Um, you know, because we've all been there where, you know, you experience silver go to 24 and then it goes back to 18 and then it could stay there for, for a year in the past. So I think, I think a lot of us who are, who've been in the, in the sort of investing in silver for a long time, I think we hold those uh, scars, so to speak. However, you know, if you take a really fresh approach and, and you talk to somebody who's a new uh, investor in the sector, there's so much in the macro that's lining up so strongly for precious metals. You know, the, the, the debt, I mean, I think that between now and, and the time that uh, the election happens, there'll be a tremendous amount of uncertainty. I think every day is going to be like, like the headline that you just showed, you know, Trump feels a little bit better than, you know, S&P goes up. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. That's a great, uh, that's a great slide. Jorge, just so you know, <laughs> That's from the the debt went up a million dollars during your last sentence, so it's going <laughs> quick. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, it's you know, and and that's the interesting thing is, you know, in if uh, if, if Trump wins, you know, it'll be another four years of uh, you know uncertainty, and um, I mean, I mean, he he's racked up a, a lot of debt, and then if if Biden wins, and he implements that crazy tax. Uh, a program that, that he has in his platform. I mean, that's, I mean, where is that uh, money going to come from? You know, the, so I think, I think either way that the, also listening to the Fed's announcements uh, over the last few weeks, I mean, it just doesn't, it just seems like everywhere you look at it, the case for, for precious metals is so strong for the, for the, for the near future. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you mentioned, fortunately the, well, Maybe unfortunately, the election. Uh, you know, it's like. Who's yeah, by the way, win? last time uh, last time you had me in a lot, of, I think I had said, uh, you know, mentioned something about how uh, Biden was ahead in the polls. A lot of yeah. people had a. I saw in the comments that a lot of people had a very, <laughs> a very no. uh, negative reaction to that. Um, I I saw but, uh, Wall Street Journal said he's ahead fourteen points. Yeah. Um, I don't know. No one's ever asked me or anyone else that I know. So I. <laughs> You know, I wondered like who's doing these polls? How accurate are they? Uh, I don't yeah, no, think... I think I think you remember last election. He was also he was even the morning off. They every a lot of outlets say you know Hillary was going to win in a landslide. I mean, I think at the end of the day, between now and election day, I think it it's going to be a very rocky ride in terms of uh, silver and gold prices. That's that's my my feeling. And I think literally every day there's going to be a piece of news. You know whether uh, you know. Uh, whether it's polls, whether it's uh, Trump, uh, you know, his recovery from COVID, whether it's, um, I mean, you, you see the, the price of gold go up and down with, you know, with a jobs number because, you know, instead of losing, uh, you know, a million jobs forecasted, only 800 million jobs were lost. So then, uh, you know, goals goes down. But the, the reality is just the bad news are just piling up and piling up and piling up. And it's not clear what's going to um, what's going to get things better. I also was, um, you know, being in in um, in the position that I'm in with running our business in Mexico and, and and in the U.S. and Canada, but also speaking to investors around the globe. It's really interesting to see the damage that COVID has caused to different uh, countries, different economies. You know, I was uh, looking at Hong Kong, who has one of the largest uh, reserves of, of cash anywhere in the world. They've gone through close to half their cash uh, since COVID. And then you have, um, you know, you have, I've been monitoring the, the economic effects in places like Argentina, Ecuador, uh, Peru, you know, um, Central America, countries that were not great to start off. And, you know, it doesn't make a lot of news, but, you know, it, Unless they find a way to reopen those economies soon, I mean, what's going to happen to those countries? You know, in, in Mexico, they took an interesting approach, which is um, 
they've basically reopened everything, even though cases are just uh, going up. I think the, the government just realized, you know, you, a lot of uh, large percentage of citizens live on daily wages. So you can't just uh, get people to stay home. So the guidance is, look, if you can afford it, work from home, stay home. And then if you have to go work, you know, just go ahead and, and go about your, uh, your day. And it's a pretty incredible like, the extent to which, you know, I, I was just uh, invited to a mining conference that's happening in person. And I was talking to the organizer. He was trying to get me to go there and, and present. And I said, I mean, just out of curiosity, like, what's the protocol? And, you know, there is some protocol, but it's still, you know, like a full-on conference, like the one, like the ones that you and I have attended over the years. And there's, you know, yes, some social distancing measures, like the boots are a little bit uh, further apart, but it's still going to be, you know, hundreds of people and, you know, exchanging cards and speaking closely. And, um, you know, the interesting thing is just to, uh, you know, when, when I listen to, um, to all these uh, economic forecasts, I, I don't think people are taking the, into account the long-term damage that's going to happen, obviously, to the U.S. economy. But the U.S., Europe, they obviously have a, a lot more re, um, resources in terms of, um, you know, they, they have uh, more tools in the box in terms of monetary policy, in, in terms of fiscal policy. They are able to get you know, cash to businesses and people in a short term basis. Outside of uh, Europe and the US, uh, you know, the rest of the world is, is not in that same situation. So what happens, like, are, are those economies really going to recover? How quickly? I mean, this is, I think, taking a lot longer than we all had thought. I mean, I remember when COVID started, you know, I was thinking, I, I was thinking, you know, by, by September, we'll be traveling again. You know, they'll, they'll probably have to come up with a solution and I mean, it's not looking that clear right now <laughs> in the U.S. It was uh, reading in parts of New York, COVID is getting really bad again, right? Well, you would think so. In fact, I'm here in New Jersey, so it's uh, yeah. interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll be interested to talk with people in New York who seem to have a very different perspective on other areas. Although, yeah. Jorge, what I don't get along the lines of what you were saying yeah, it does seem like a lot of the economy was shut down, yet here we have the S&P basically, right. <laughs> you know, it's taken a, like took September off from the bubble inflating. But I mean, look, this is where it went when you had COVID <laughs> and large parts of the globe are yeah. shut down. But I'm sure, I mean, I know, I, I'm sure someone, I'm maybe I'm a little bitter. Someone called me a conspiracy theorist on Twitter the other yeah. day. Uh, so I'm sure, you know, it's just me being out on left field that this has nothing to do with that. I'm sure they're completely unconnected and, you know, uh, makes it interesting if the stock market just keeps going at all time highs due to unending money printing. How is silver going to respond to that at some point? Yeah, I know. And, that, and that's, a, that's the whole thing that gives me personally, a lot of confidence in, in silver going forward. Because, you know, the, at, at some point, the, you know, the, the money printing, you know, it, it can just keep going on forever. A lot of it, it's been supported because, you know, the people still consider the U.S. as a, as a you know, well, obviously, the, the, it, it's the, the currency used widely for business. And, and it's sort of like the, it's, it's become, a, 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 you know, over the last few weeks, it's become a safe heaven, even even more than gold, you know, which is ironic. It, it speaks to the fact that, you know, the, as bad as the U.S. economy is, a lot of the investors perceive everything else being uh, even in worse uh, <laughs> shape. But I, I mean, at, at what point are people going to be like, okay, you guys are just printing money? That are, are they going to keep buying U.S. bonds? You know, when when we start having negative real rates. It, you, you do think that at some point the, you, the system just can't keep going, um, at, you know, forever and you can't keep uh, printing money without basically destroying the value of the U.S. dollar. So I think, you know, uh, no matter what, the, um, it, the, the, point, the, the point for silver and silver stocks, it's, it's become, you know, it, it's an important, it, you need to, uh, as, a, as an investor, really think seriously of having an allocation, uh, you know, without a doubt. Even just to say, forget about, 
you know, what silver could go to or anything, just a store of value to begin with. But I, I also, you know, I also think the, um, you know, the, the macro setting is, uh, is just so strong for precious metals. Everything between um, money printing, debt, uncertainty. Um, I think also uh, on the supply side uh, for silver, you know, it's, um, it's been years and years of, um, of silver exploration having very little investment. And then remember that silver is also a byproduct of copper. And copper, uh, you know, the, I, I forget the exact number of how much silver is a byproduct of copper, but it's, it's definitely more 70 than 30%. to 80. I usually hear well, 70 to 80%. Well, 70 to 80% is a byproduct of, uh, of base metal, so but includes zinc, uh, includes, um, includes copper. I forget how much of it is exactly from copper, but, but I think the principle applies for... Um, for base metals, the you know the if you look at the supply demand, so little supply has come online for, for so many years, and you know on the supply side for for those of you who are not as familiar with uh, mining, it's not like in oil and gas where you can really switch up the the button when prices go up and and you know restart production. If you shut down a mine, it takes actually more than a a year or two to restart it. And then if you're starting a new mining project, it, it could take you 10 years or, or more. Uh, it's becoming harder and harder to permit. It's becoming a harder, and harder, harder and harder to find new deposits. So I think uh, so many things are coming together in favor of uh, silver. Well, I think everybody knows where I stand. So we'll leave that for today. Although, Jorge, uh, before we wrap this one up, yes. um, as you know, I hosted Silverfest a couple of weeks back, and we had this one panel where uh, the topic was when silver hits $50, which I think is still very much coming. Uh, I wouldn't be bold enough to say when, but um, which are the stocks that you would want to hold the most? And we had a couple of our panelists uh, mentioned Raina, so I thought I would play this right here for you. And oh, yeah. perhaps then you can comment. And I know you have a little news out. So uh, anyway, just uh, for folks who are wondering what you've been up to, here is what a few analysts think about Raina Silver. I really like Raina Silver. Uh, I think mm. this, this company is one that one, one has to look at. I have uh, a friends, uh, family offices that are in this one. Is it going to be the next Mag Silver? I don't know. Maybe Jerry is going to talk about it. <laughs> and that's Andrew O'Donnell of Supercharged Stocks. And indeed, Jerry Wang of Gemini Capital uh, did talk about it, which you can hear here. Honorary fourth pick, just to throw that in there, would be Reina. It's, uh, this is an uh, unknown uh, so far. I mean, they're st just starting to scratch the surface. This is an RTO we discussed with Rob early in the year. What's really interesting, uh, as you know, with junior mining, it's really people first and then, you know, a kind of project, right? So Reina seems to have both. You have Peter McGall and the you know, legendary team from Mag Silver, which is a massive company. It's, you know, lots of check, $2 billion market cap. For a non-producer, they have a Juan Scipio, JV, with a massive, uh, you know, little Mexican company. So there's no there's no doubt it's ongoing production, right? So so to basically prove his thesis further, Peter seems to have found another similar Mag lookalike, and that's, that's Reina. I mean, if you want to take a bet, hard to go wrong with someone who's done multiple times before him. So that would be the, my fourth honorary pick. Uh, and a bit of an unknown uh, so far, but the, the team behind it, uh, EMC and Jorge, very solid uh, family office guys in Hong Kong. They're long-term guys. Uh, and this is one of their deals they've launched this year. So I have, I have pretty good confidence in that one. I wanted to And real quick, before we hear a short note from Rob, Jorge, you have been a sponsor to our show on a couple of occasions, although I would like to point out that none of the, these are all individual analysts. They were not sponsors. They were not paid to say this. This was just their yeah. own uh, unsolicited comments when I was asking them which stocks they would like in that environment. So we'll finish up, Rob, and then I'll let you comment from there. Great. My hat in the ring for Raina because of Dr. McGall. He thinks Raina has the land that has the, the, um, the origin for the mag silver deposit. And if so, it could actually be bigger. So if his thesis is correct, Raina could actually become mag part two, right? And if, that, and if that's true, the investors that got in on those early capital raises are going to do extraordinarily well. 
So yeah. there we go, Jorge. Uh, and we're going to record I, I, I a... I actually had an artist. That's, uh, that was great to hear. Thank you. Well, it, it was great to hear. And again, these are guys that I trust. Uh, I feel my expertise is more in silver as the commodity, but learning the yeah. silver stocks. These are some of the folks I turned to as well and just felt it would be a good time to point that out, what some of the analysts in the yeah. community think about what you're doing. And perhaps before we wrap up, I know uh, we're going to record a separate clip with some of your news, but you could just give yeah. people an idea of what they'll get in that one. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you know, definitely for any of your listeners who are interested in having upside in addition to any physical silver that you that you might have, obviously the equities have a, a lot of leverage to the physical silver. So definitely consider our company. Our it's called Reina Silver. The website is uh, reinasilver.com. My email, if you want to reach out to me, is uh, j o r g e at reinasilver.com. Happy to to uh, communicate with anybody who's interested to know more about the company. But essentially we have a flagship asset that uh, came from Max Silver, actually two flagship assets that came from Max Silver. They both have district scale and high grade potential. They've been drilled. And what we're doing is with the cash that we have, you know, taking the exploration to the next step. And then we recently announced two acquisitions, one in Mexico, one in Nevada. And again, two excellent projects that have district scale potential high grade they've been drilled before so our job is to to now explore them further and you know because of the two capital raises that we've done we have close to 12 million dollars in the bank so we have enough money to to drill our projects and create a lot of uh, value for shareholders so definitely take a look at the company and and uh and thanks chris for for giving us a chance to to speak about our company well, thank you, Jorge. I appreciate that. I appreciate you joining me again. And uh, the information he just mentioned is in the description link below, right down there. Although fortunately, because Jorge is a very kind man who's running a great company, in my opinion, he stuck around to give us some details on some of those new announcements. And you don't even have to go anywhere because it's coming your way now.